OMG to Costa Frappuccinos. Starbucks has a rival. Just look at that. I've just come to Costa for my lunch, which I'm eating in the car, kind of sad. <laughs> so I've got, for later, a blueberry muffin. Nom. And then for lunch now, I've got a toasted panini. It was annoying, in all the fridge display ones, they had the calories written on, and I stupidly started reading them, and then I was like getting myself all worked up. So in the end, I ordered it from like their deli counter, where it's just the sandwiches are out and you don't see the calories in them, so. I've got a Costa Frappuccino. Oh, they're called Frostinos in Costa, but oh my God, look at that. Move over Starbucks. <laughs> it's nice, it's very, very sweet. So this is a chicken ban mi panini, toasted. I love anything toasted. And that's when my head kicks in like, it's probably full of mayonnaise, look at the cheese. I wonder if they put butter in the bread. Shut up, head. <laughs> it's tasty, leave me alone. I'm actually not sure it does have cheese in it. Oh, it's like a coleslaw. I thought these orange bits were like grated cheese, but I actually think they're carrots. Can't walk past my car. It must think I'm so weird recording myself eating. I actually got quite embarrassed ordering the food in Costa. I felt like I was ordering so much food and I was like, I felt like everyone was looking at me like, oh my God, she's so greedy. And then when they gave it to me in a freaking bag, <laughs> I was like, do I really need a shopping bag for my lunch? Like, come on. It's like a little bit spicy. I have zero tolerance to spice at all. It's probably got like mango chutney in it or something. And I'm like, mm, a little bit spicy. <laughs> Oh, making a right mess. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> but I guess food doesn't all need to be kept separate. I'm turning the aircon right up in my car to try and stop it from melting. <laughs> trying to like create a little fridge to keep my Frostino cold. <laughs> it's gonna look like I'm in a music video with like the wind in my hair. <laughs> It's literally so tasty. I'm really enjoying it. Yeah. Okay, now that that's out of the way, I feel like I can chat a bit better. <laughs> so that was one of my challenges and it actually kind of goes beyond just a food challenge. And I don't know if people are gonna be able to relate to this, but for me, there's a challenge in like spending money on myself with food as well and like buying myself nice foods. And maybe things that are like slightly unnecessary or a bit of a treat, like I just wouldn't normally do that. Oh, I can stop the car now. I always think like, oh, don't spend money now, you need to save, or don't have calories now, you need to lose weight. It's always like sacrifice now for something better that's going to happen. But I'm really trying to challenge that because then I feel like I'm constantly miserable because I'm never doing anything nice and I'm always like living in the hope of I'll be happy when I get this or things will be so much better when I've saved or when I'm lowering weight or whatever but really I'm like just miserable from it because I'm never doing anything nice. I'm just starting to think like am I really going to look back on my life and be like oh I'm so glad my bank balance was that when I turned 30 or I'm so glad I lost that bit of weight or I'm so glad I only ate that many calories on that day like no. No, like, so I'm trying hard to challenge these things and not living by this like delayed gratification of sacrifice now to be happy in the future because I've been doing that for ages and it's not really working for me. And if I look at like myself compared to Brendan, one of the things I love about him most is that he's so like, live for the minute, does what makes him happy. And if I compare the two of us, like he does what he wants and he enjoys whatever, his money, his food, his time, his, and I'm there going, oh, don't do this now, hold yourself back on that sacrifice this oh and then you'll be happy but i don't know i'm just starting to look at the two of us and thinking whose approach really works better like am i happier for losing weight or saving up all my money and not doing nice things on myself or is he for living in the minute 
and that's rhetorical like I definitely think it's his approach and I know my approach doesn't work because like I get to these goals like I lose that bit of weight and maybe I'm happy for a minute like I get that buzz from it but it doesn't last very long and then I need to like reset the goalposts and then it's the next target and now you have to lose a bit more and then you have to lose a bit more and I feel like I'm just constantly like sacrificing and pursuing something that's promising me happiness but it's never delivered I've never got this happiness from it and far from it, like, if anything, it makes me miserable because then along the way, I've not done any of the nice shit that Brendan's done. I've just been boring and restricting and sacrificing and punishing. Ah, oh, just for what? Like, it never delivers for me. So anyway, as with anything, I feel like I've got this insight into it and I can kind of understand it theoretically. But when I come to do it, it's so much more difficult. Like this today cost me 15 frigging quid. <laughs> 15 quid on lunch and a snack which is what, like $20? But I'm not gonna do that every day, but it's a bit like with the food, I kind of wanna challenge it to break all my fears around it and get to the point where I can do it. And then I won't need to do it all the time, I'll just do it kind of like as and when, but I have the ability, I'm not like scared of it or I'm not feeling guilty because of it in whatever, whether it's food or money or being nice to myself or whatever it is. So that's my kind of thinking behind it, but. And also I think, yeah, 15 quid a day for a while is expensive on lunch and snacks, but like, if that's the price of breaking this, never being able to be nice to myself, never being able to enjoy good foods or spend money on myself or treat myself, like, I don't think you can really put a price on recovery. And I think there's always an excuse why we can't, like, there's always a reason why recovery is not right now. Like, I don't know, you've got a holiday coming up or a birthday or you need to save your money or, or you're just not feeling quite ready for it or you're a bit poorly or whatever. Like, I feel like there's always gonna be a reason why now's not the right time. And to some degree, I just think it's never gonna be the right time. You're just gonna have to jump in and challenge yourself on whatever these things are. And also, this isn't just something I want to do during recovery. Like, I'm not treating these as like recovery foods or weight gain foods. Like. These are normal foods, like it's a normal thing to get a panini from Costa or to have a Frostino. And same with the money, like maybe I won't do it every single day. Maybe I won't spend 15 quid on lunch every day. Maybe I won't have a panini and a Frostino every day, but it's the ability to be able to do it that I want to have. And then out of preference, I'll be able to choose like how hungry I am or what I fancy or what other people are doing. Maybe it's convenient because everyone's going to Costa or maybe there's food in the office. I don't know, like, but yeah, I just want my decisions to be driven by like, preferences and by what's going on around and not by some weird little like thing in my head that's driving me to sacrifice all the time for a greater goal and I'm kind of getting there with the food like when I first started having frappuccinos I just want them and want them and want them and now I'm kind of like even this I'm a bit like a bit full now <laughs> kind of a bit over it and that's not to say like tomorrow I might want eight in a row so like cravings definitely haven't gone but I can tell I'm not wanting them as much. I guess like my body's getting used to the tastes again. It's having them quite consistently and regularly. In the last week I've had like a cake or a frappuccino every single day. So my body's trusting it a bit more and thinking, okay, this is coming in regularly. It doesn't need to like crave them to make me go and eat them all at once because it knows tomorrow I'll get another one. And then I guess when you're in a healthy body, you won't need it as badly because your body isn't trying to fix itself. So I think it like all comes together, like your body, mind and soul, it all like wants feeding, it wants nice things for itself, it wants to be treated every now and then. And if you're like doing it regularly and consistently, hopefully it'll just leave you at peace a little bit more. I won't give you all the shit of an eating disorder and like obsessions with food and cravings and thinking you're gonna start drinking them or eating them and never ever stop because your body will just know like, okay, I don't need to have 15 in a row, I'll have one today and then another one tomorrow if I want it. <laughs> but I do think you'll only get there through letting yourself do it and giving it to your body. Oh, it's nice, it's very, very sweet. And I'm really quite full now, so getting to the point where it's getting forced down a little bit. And yeah, now I'm finding this very, very sweet and feeling a little bit sick. So maybe one day I won't always need a large. Maybe I'll just be like, oh, small's probably all right. I might feel a bit sick from a large. Who knows? Or maybe I'll have larges for the rest of my life. <laughs> I do not know. <laughs> I remember previously in recovery, I was obsessed with frappuccinos and I would have like five in a row. And I'd go with Brendan to get one and he'd get like a small fruit version and I'd be there with like the large creamy version and I used to feel so guilty and so bad like look at him having fruit and you're there with your creamy one blah 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 and having five in a row and he, he's had one little small and you've had five larges. <laughs> but then over time I'd go and sometimes I'd just be like 
you know what? I really want a fruit one. I don't fancy the creamy ones. But I definitely had to give my body like the chocolatey ones in the first place to then fancy the fruit ones every now and then. And it really was only every now and then. I think I just prefer these ones. And maybe Brendan does prefer fruit. Maybe I prefer the chocolatey ones. Like, ugh, that's fine. Oh, this is so sweet. Oh, and oats is another good example of that. Since I like introduced porridge and overnight oats, I have gone crazy for it. I've had them like several times a day, like breakfast, snacks, like, oh my God, give me all the overnight oats. And now I'm getting to the point where I like fancy other things for breakfast, like cereal and toast and stuff like that. So I think with like having it repeatedly, and now I know what it tastes like, I know it's coming in consistently. I guess my body trusts that it's not gonna get restricted again. And I'm just not, like, I still love it. Don't get me wrong. I'm still a big fan of the overnight oats, but I'm not as crazy obsessed with them as I was. And yeah, I've got like no intention of cutting overnight oats out. Like I don't see them now as like a recovery food or a weight gain food or anything like that. I just see them as a food. I've not ballooned, I've not got massive, I've not gotten fat from them. I can kind of see like, okay, this is just a normal food that I'm allowed to have as part of everyday life. Which is really nice because I was terrified about that. When I first started having them, I was like, I'm never gonna stop eating these. I'm gonna become so reliant on them. I'm gonna gain weight on them forever and ever and ever. And now I'm just like, do you know what, they're just overnight oats, it's really not that big a deal and I'm really not going to get fat and I can just keep eating them and I don't want to eat them for like every single meal, like I kind of did at first but now I don't, like I can have them once a day and that's fine or sometimes maybe I'll fancy something else instead, like oh, I feel so sick from this really feel quite sick now so I don't know if everyone will be able to relate to like the money part of being nice to yourself but definitely the food part like we do deserve nice foods and to treat ourselves and have like unnecessary things sometimes happiness isn't like freaking hibernation we're not like storing up for happiness like if I do all of this now then I'll be so happy when I go and hibernate <laughs> I don't know if that analogy works but I definitely think we get trapped in this like I'll be happy when cycle and like I don't know how many times we need to go through this cycle to just realise like ah oh, it just doesn't make you happy. So I'm definitely trying to challenge this and stop living like I'm in friggin happiness hibernation and just live for the minute now. Oh god there's a car coming to park next to me. Maybe I'll record again when I have that muffin. Muffin time! Kind of don't want it that much because so it's not my favourite flavour. I used to kind of get this like, if you're gonna eat, it needs to be perfect. Like, it's almost like spending your calories. Like you have to really make sure you're spending them wisely and like making the most out of it. But to be honest, like I know I'll just have a different one tomorrow. So it doesn't bother me too much. I think once you're like having these foods regularly, you know what they taste like again. Your body knows that they're coming in consistently. You don't have quite such a like need for them or quite such a dependency on them being perfect, I guess. Like it's okay, I can eat a muffin and it doesn't need to be the most perfect thing that ever happened in my life. I also still feel quite sick, I have to say, from having that frappuccino earlier. What they called frostino earlier really has made me feel quite ill. Which is weird, because normally I finish a large one of them and I'm like, where's the rest? <laughs> I literally feel like they should be about eight times bigger than they are. <laughs> I used to feel like I could have eaten the whole of Costa. Honestly, like, you could have closed that door and given me two hours and I'd have polished the whole lot off. And then gone next door to Starbucks and had a good go at their stock as well. <laughs> But yeah, even like halfway through that one, I was kind of feeling sick and I still feel sick from it now. So it's kind of, I don't really want another sweet thing, but, but anyway, I'm just gonna eat it anyway. So look who we've got down here. Hello, darling. Oh, loving life. <laughs> so I'll just eat first and then I'll chat after because I don't want to stress myself out trying to do the two things. And I've lined up a recovery vlog to watch whilst I eat. I've got hand arts and she's great. I really, really like her, so. Yeah, I'll watch this, eat, and then I'll chat. Ah! It's got another big line of goo going through the middle. They do love putting goo in the middle of muffins these days, don't they? <laughs> of course, I'm gonna eat a bottom first. The goo's really good. Food 
for another <laughs> few hours. Although having said that, I don't know, I kind of feel like, when I feel full and sick, I feel like I don't want to look at food and just the thought of food is horrible, but then at the same time I want to eat still. Like what the hell? I can feel like full and sick and hungry and wanting to eat and never wanting to see food all at the same time. I kind of think of it like your body, mind and soul all are wanting to eat. Like you can almost satisfy one, like your body can be like, okay, I'm full, but then your mind's still like, I'm not. I don't remember what muffins taste like. I want some more muffins. <laughs> And then your soul's like, I still need feeding, I'm still not right, I'm still not happy. Like, just the three of them need to get on the same page. <laughs> and I hope that comes across in the vlog as well. Like, I'd never want to make recovery look fun because it's not, it's far from it. I'm not always like enjoying frappuccinos in the car. Like, sometimes I'm literally forcing food down and feeling sick and bloated and horrible and disgusting and gross. And yeah, you've just got to push through that, I guess. Like, and like, I tend to like having chats and stuff when I'm recording, so I normally do it when I'm in a good frame of mind, but. Yeah, it's definitely not easy. But I guess no one's happy all the time, are they? And like, I almost feel like that's one of the problems in eating disorders is that we so don't want to be like sad or feel bad or anything that we turn to the eating disorders like a quick fix, like an immediate buzz of like, yes, I feel better, I've done this, to not have to sit with like not feeling good about something else. I know things do pass naturally, but I'm not very good at waiting for that to happen. I tend to be like looking for something that will make it feel better immediately. And so say I'm like, I don't know, missing Brendan, I'm like a bit lonely, a bit like just missing him. So my emotion is like, oh, I feel a bit lonely. And so then I'd look to restriction to fix that, but it's not even related in the slightest. Like it's totally not addressing the real problem. So it's weird, we like turn to anorexia as like a feel good when we're feeling sad, but really it's got nothing to do with the original problem and like what are, what's going on. And I love a good analogy, okay? So let's say there was like damp on the wall in your lounge, okay? That's your emotion. The real, addressing that emotion would be like getting the damp fixed. But with anorexia, we don't do that. We go like, oh no, I'm gonna now go and like walk into the kitchen <laughs> and do something in there. Like, I don't know, I'm now gonna like polish the tiles in the kitchen to try and fix the damp in the lounge. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's like, we turn to something totally unrelated to the original problem to try and fix it and make ourselves feel better. So we're sat in the kitchen going, oh, my tiles look really nice now. I'm really pleased with that. But the damp's still in the lounge. Like we still haven't really addressed what's going on. And if anything, the damp's now getting worse because we've not addressed it. And we're still stood in the kitchen worrying about our tiles. And so my psychologist has helped me a lot with this, thinking like emotions are there to like tell us something and we either need to just like tolerate them and wait for them to pass naturally, not look for a quick fix, or we need to like address the actual emotion, but again, not turn to something else to try and fix it. So like thinking about missing Brendan, like if I just tolerate it, he's back in a couple of days, so I can just wait for it to pass naturally, or I could go and see a friend and then I wouldn't be as lonely. So I've actually like addressed the real problem. But if I restrict to deal with it, it's got nothing to do with Brendan not being here. It's got nothing to do with me being lonely. And if anything, it'll make, God, this bum. <laughs> if anything, it'll make the loneliness worse because when you restrict, you tend to then like isolate yourself and cut yourself off. So it's like something happens in life, which we're not that happy about. And then we turn to eating disorders as a way to cope, but it's so not related to what's actually going on in your life. And then if anything, it makes it worse because of all the horrible things that eating disorders do to us. So I can't even really remember why I started talking about that. I hope you've liked the video. If you do, please give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel, leave comments. Hope everyone's having a nice day and you're treating yourselves nicely and spending money on yourselves as well, doing nice things for yourself. And yeah, I'll record soon.